Say, guess who's coming home for dinner? Yes, it's Joshua Boyle, that sometimes alleged hostage, that sometimes alleged sexual assaulter, and that sometimes honored guest of Justin Trudeau. Yet, as the bizarre Boyle saga continues to unfold, why is it that there's still so much about this soap opera that doesn't make any sense? And why does the mainstream media continue to veer away from asking the truly hard questions. You may remember Joshua Boyle. He's that goofball who thought it was a groovy idea to take his pregnant American wife on a backpacking trip through Afghanistan some six years ago. I think it would have been safer to scale Mount Everest during a blizzard, but what does a homebody like me know about the international jet set? Anyway, the inevitable happened as the Boyles went tiptoeing through the tulips in one of the most upside-down, gunned-up regimes in the entire world. Namely, Joshua and Caitlin met up with some really bad jihadis who allegedly kidnapped them. Well, those jihadis really weren't all that bad, mind you. I mean, the couple were allowed regular conjugal visits, producing three children as a result. It should be noted that Caitlin's original baby perished either via abortion or miscarriage, depending on whom you believe. But eventually, the Boyle clan was rescued and whisked back home to Canada. And they all lived happily ever after, right? <laughs> Not quite. For this fine young man was arrested back on New Year's Day in Ottawa and charged with, good golly, 19 criminal acts, including sexual assault, unlawful confinement, and assault with a weapon. These charges covered off a wide range of offenses committed during October to December of last year, right after his return to Canada. Hey, that's gratitude for you, eh? But after going to the Crowbar Motel for a spell, he's now out on bail thanks to a $10,000 bond posted by his beleaguered parents. And what's more, Ottawa Citizen's crime reporter, Gary Dimmock, reports that Joshua Boyle's wife wants a divorce. <laughs> Do you blame her? In any event, so many questions beg to be answered here, but I'll have to whittle it down to a list of the top four. Number one, how in blue hell can Joshua Boyle afford Lawrence Greenspawn as his attorney? Mr. Greenspawn is a top shelf legal eagle. Who's paying those bills? Number two, why doesn't the media have more questions about the alleged kidnapping and what brought Joshua Boyle to Afghanistan in the first place. Number three, did Prime Minister Justin Trudeau know if the police were investigating Joshua Boyle for his 19 charges when he personally met with the family back in November? And finally, number four, am I the only one who is rattled by the fact that Joshua's previous wife happens to be the odious pro-Al-Qaeda Zanaib Khadr? Yes, none other than the sister of Omar Khadr, yeah, that poor kid who was given a multi-million dollar payout of your money and a public apology by your prime minister last summer. Uh, then again, little Omar did suffer years of incarceration at Gitmo, and all the kid did was murder an American serviceman and partially blind another. In any event, so many questions, so few answers. Look, I don't claim to know what's really going on when it comes to the whole boil brouhaha but it just gets ever more confusing with each passing month. But I do know this, in the here and now, this case stinks worse than rancid tuna left out in the Kandahar sun. And how very odd, how very sad, that someone like a Joshua Boyle is a free man today, while someone like Tommy Robinson rots behind bars. What's wrong with this picture? For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, you may have heard the Rebel has a brand new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.